Uh, chapter 23. There's nothing to do but wait. Wait while the water level inside the ship rose and carry my friends toward the top of the chamber, up to where the grate was. I couldn't maintain my level right behind the ship any longer. I said goodbye to my friends and zoomed out to the far side. The open air is a blessing. I soared high in a nice star pattern created by the ship itself. I rose high over the top of the ship. The park rangers were all around a clearing. The helicopters and two of the bug fires still parked on a the ground in a little clearing. The blade ship was up there too. Two other bug fires started zipping around a treetop level. While I watched, they brought the harbinger curiously. They brought the harbinger curiously fire off the dracon beam. They dragged him for a visor free. When we got we got so we thought the harbinger was totally fearless and deadly, but this one was not looking very brave. He collapsed for a visor free, and I almost felt sorry for him. It was one of the terrible things about our battle with the Yurks. See, our enemy is just a slug that lives in the heads of controllers. The harbinger had made a controller against his will. He lost his freedom to the Yurk in his head, and now he's about to lose his life or something he had no real control over. I couldn't hear what was happening on the ground, but I could see. My hawk eyes could see far, far too well. I turned away. I won't tell you what happened to Harbinger, the memory of my own private nightmare. But on the next look, the Harbinger was gone, and in his place a sudden rush of other Harbinger and Taxons and humans all striding visor free. He was looking angry. He pointed to Sky. When a few seconds the helicopters were lifting off, and two bug fires powered up and took off, I had a very bad feeling I knew what had happened. The Dune Harbinger told Visor Free about the bird he fired, and some controller probably said, Oh yeah, I saw a bird acting weird too. And someone said, Hey, wasn't that bird distract Harbinger yesterday and let the human get away? Visor Free put two and two together, an animal acting unlike an animal meant one thing to him, Andalites and Morph. I guess I should have been flattered he believed we were Andalites when we were true Andalite warriors, but it didn't make a difference what he thought was an Andalite or human. He was seeing his creatures in the sky, looking for a bird that was no bird. Me. The bug fire skinned over a tree. This twin drake on me fired again and again short, sharp spears of burning light. My heart was in my throat. They're killing every bird they saw. The hawk is their territory. Behind me, a helicopter. A drake on beam with a near miss. I couldn't get away. Between bug fire and helicopters, they were too numerous and too quick. But there's one place no one's going to risk firing a drake on beam, not that what Mizafria had just done to Kara's heart bajure. I let go of the air between my wings and dropped. Down and down, toward the vast truck ship below me, like a steel meadow. And it's that they're all on me, but the angles are all wrong. I I was too close to the ship and they couldn't fire. I lay on top of the hovering ship. I planted my talons on a hard, cold metal surface. It stretched in every direction around me. The surface curved down away so I couldn't even see the edges, as if it was staying alone on a metal moon. Over my head hovered helicopters and bug fires. I could see human and harbinger and tax and eyes all focused on me. I knew a look in their eyes. The look of the predator. And me, their prey. Chapter 24 It was not looking good for me. If I tried to fly off the ship, I, the ship, I'd be Drake on ten different ways before I couldn't get away. It was an eerie scene. I stood in the vast metal plane while over my head they hovered a swarm of deadly predators. And then things got worse. A lot worse. It flowed my vision like a dark moon, the blade ship of Visor Free. It hovered just a few hundred feet up. I felt the last of my courage beginning to fail. Tobias, old buddy, you're not getting out of this alive, I said to myself. But they all just hovered there and I began to realize the truth. They didn't know what to do about me. They couldn't shoot without hating a ship. And a light. The voice of him made me real. I almost took flight out of sheer fear. He'd never spoken directly to me before. It was a voice of such absolute power. Such utter confidence. The mere silent sound in your head makes you want to obey. Makes you quiver in fear. The voice of dread and destruction. And a light. Fool. Do you think I don't know what you are? A true bird would fly away. Say nothing over myself, nothing. I tried to reply, no me for a human. I couldn't tell him that. I wouldn't give him anything. I closed my mind, but I couldn't shut that voice. Give yourself up, Andalite. I will give you a quick and painless death as soon as you tell me where the others are. I'd seen what Visor Free did to Heart Bajur displeased him. The memory was very fresh in my mind. Have it your way, Andalite. I am patient. I can wait here as long as it takes, and then you will die quickly by Dracon Beam, or maybe if we snare you more slowly in my ship, much more slowly. And then I heard another voice, a very different one. It was faint as if far away. Tobias, Tobias can you hear me? Rachel, yes, I can hear you. Tobias, we're trapped. The tank is full and the great one open. Cassie and Jake already morphed back to you, but they can't get open. We're trapped in here. Rachel, I, what do I do? We can't get out. Listen, Tobias, we're trapped. There's no way out. The ship will take off. They'll find so we get to the mothership and unload the water. Tobias, we... We don't want to be taken alive. My blood ran cold. My head was whirling. What are you talking about? Listen, we can't be taken alive. Do you understand? There's anything you can do. Anything. Rachel, what can I do? I can't get you out of there. I know. We all know. But there's some way to... If the ship can be destroyed. We know it's probably not possible. I just... If there was some way... No. No. 
I have to morph to human. We'll tread water from here. We'll be ready when you get to the mothership, and then we'll morph to other animals and go down fighting. This can't be happening, I cried. This can't be happening. I guess Marco was right all along, Rachel said sadly. I guess I always was seen to think we'd fight the Yurks. Rachel, I never told you. You didn't have to, Tobias. I knew. Goodbye. She fell silent, and when Maya could picture her regaining her human shape, treading water to yours, unable to escape, expecting only the worst, praying I might find a way to make their ends swift, as Visitor Free offered to make mine. We'd lost. The Yurk said one finally, and while we are gone, the last hope of human race would die. Above me, a blade ship waited like... like a hawk watching a rabbit. Waited to swoop, waited to swoop down and finish me. Only I wasn't a rabbit. Visitor Free was a predator? Well, so was I. And I no longer have anything to be afraid of. My friends are going to die in the mothership. I'd be lost and alone in a world where I belong nowhere. I had nothing else to lose. Just now I saw something that should terrify me. Across the metal plane ship, they crawled and slithered all around me. A dozen of them, giant worms, centipedes with a hunger for flesh. Taxons. They come from inside the ship on Visitor Free's orders. If I stay put, they would catch me. If I flew, the ships would fry me. They slows a circle around me. It looks as if you run out of time, Visifree said in my head. He laughed, and it was not a nice laugh. Ah, Visifree, you ruthless predator, I thought. Very clever. You have me trapped. Trapped like a rabbit. But a trapped rabbit is one thing. A trapped hawk with a mind of human being is entirely different. The nearest taxon leveled a handheld drake on me and me. He watched me two of the circle of red globs they have her eyes. I pushed off my feet and beat the air of my wings. I flew straight for those red jello eyes. He raised one of his feeble forms to shield his eyes. The wrong move. I trimmed the shade right, raising my talons forward and struck like I was hanging a mouse in the field. My talons closed around a drake on beam. His weak grip was no match for my speed. And the beam tore loose from his grip. Get him, Visitor Free cried. I could practically see a blade ship rock from the force of his rage. But I didn't take to the air. I flew fast but hugged the surface of the middle curve. They couldn't hit me without hitting their precious ship. I knew just where I wanted to go. The wingtips actually hit the ship on each downstroke. Um, I raced toward the ship's bridge, toward the tiny windows where I'd seen the crew. I couldn't save my friends, but I could try to grant Rachel's last witch. I could bring this ship down, even at the end of my friends. Chapter 25 Take off. Move, Visitor Command to crew of the truck ship. Also, immediately, huge thing to move forward, slowly, but as the move created headwind, the bridge is moving away. The ship is rising as it went. 100 feet now, 200. Ha! Not so easily, Andalite. And right then, I had a powerful urge to shock that evil monster and say, guess what? Not Andalite at all. But I wasn't going to start bragging. The truth was, it was looking bad. The ship was slowly picking up speed. I flapped harder and harder. I gained again, but it was painfully slow and I was wearing out. The beam weighed me down. The headwind was building. Ahead of me, just a few feet away, I saw the bulge of the bridge. I gained a foot, and then another. I landed and pulled my wings. I couldn't fly anymore, but if I could pull myself along my talons, gripping small edges and ridges on the bridge. I was there, below me, transparent plastic. I could see the crew of the bridge and taxing stared up at me wildly. One last desperate lunge, I propelled myself in the air. I had to fly full force to stay ahead of the onrushing windows, and then with one sharp talon, I pulled the trigger on the Dracon beam. Fry, you worms! There was no recoil, not like a regular gun at all, but a beam of intense red light lanced from me to the bridge. It burned all over the window, sliced through the fat taxing and sliced on control panels and instruments like a hot knife through butter. I squeezed that trigger for as long as I could, until at last, exhausted, I could do no more. The Draco beam slipped from my talon and plunged toward the earth below, but I'd done it. It was an incredible and terrible thing to see. The ship, big as a skyscraper, vast beyond belief, shudders so it hit a speed bump. Still it rose, sharply up in the sky, as if it were a whale breaching. It ain't for space its natural home, but it was clear there was no longer in control. It rolled suddenly on its side, and then BOOM! A ball of orange flame. The eye control ship had smashed recklessly into one of the helicopters, and it fell in ruins. The bug fires and blade ships scurried out of the way quickly, but too late. Crunch. BOOM! One well, of the bug fires slammed the side of the ship and it was finished. The blade ship and the remaining one foot you quickly. And I saw the hole. A tear a hundred feet long had opened the side of the truck ship. From the hole of water of the lake gushed. It was a waterfall from the sky. Millions of gallons hemorrhaging out. Oh boy, I whispered. We were maybe about 700 feet above the forest now when I saw them. Cassie first, then Rachel and Marco together, then Jake. They fell all fully human from the torn side of the ship. They plummeted helpless and doomed toward the onrushing ground. There was nothing I could do. I knew it, but I still hurled after them, hurled with all my speed as they fell, arms swelling and mouths open in screams of terror. After 26. They fell, but as they fell, they began to change. Cassie was the first. Feathers sprout from her skin, one of her morse and osprey, a distant cousin of the red tails. She fell, and she eventually became less human. Marco and Rachel previously morphed bald eagles. They're huge birds, much bigger than red tailed hawks. As I watched long wings replace their flailing arms. Jesse had morphed a perigene falcon. 
Parajeans are so fast I make red tails out there standing still. As I watch a pair of jeans beep her in Jake's mouth. Not enough time, not enough time. Hit the ground before swoop. Cassie opened her wings and skimmed along the treetops. Marco barely made it. He fell down to the forest out of sight. I was sure he'd been too late, but up on a tree swallowed a bird with six foot wings spread and a proud white head. Yes, I cried. In the sky overhead, a huge truck ship stopped climbing. It rolled again onto its back this time, plunged back to Earth. Man, that was way too close, heard Marco yell. That does it. I've had it with this animorph stuff. You're not safe yet, I told him. Look. When the truck out of the way and fell on Earth, the blade ship and the bug fires came after us. Quick, into the trees, out of sight. Like a well-trained fire squadron, we swooped in the forest. Down below the tops of trees, there are yurks who can no longer see us. Boom! An explosion like a bomb going off, the truck ship hit the ground. The concussion rolled us over like a tidal wave of air. I rocked into a tree as I was always being hurt. Everyone okay? I yelled. And one by one they said yes, but the explosion disturbed every animal in the forest. The birds all here hidden or flown away during earlier fighting, but a few still left took wings, startled. I saw her take off. The hawk. She was scared and wanted to run to the sky. But the sky was not a sanctuary for her. I don't know which ship fired. Well, there's one of the bug fires of the blade ship. You see, they had a good long look at me, and she looked just like me. The dracon beam sizzled and burned off a wing. She fell to earth, never to fly again. Chapter 27 the Yerk truck ship burned, while his left was eliminated by the Yerks. No evidence been left behind, no proof they could show the world. But we had destroyed it. And a bug fire as well. And we got now alive. Most of us. It was a day later I went to see Rachel again, it was like she was expecting me. Hi Tobias, she said, come on in, it's safe. I hopped out the window and flared over the dresser. How are you doing, she asked. I'm okay. She was unsure to say next. Look up, uh, Tobias, maybe it seems crazy, but Cassie and I are thinking, you know, maybe we should go back to the lake, try and find her body. The hawk, you know, at least barrier. No, it doesn't sound crazy at all, Rachel said softly. Not crazy at all. Just human. She looked keenly at me. Well, we are human, all of us. Yeah, I knew I was human. I realized how, how sad I was she was killed. See, a hawk wouldn't care. If she'd been my mate, I would have missed her, been disturbed. But sadness? That's a human emotion. I know it seems strange, but I guess only a human really cared that a bird died. If you helped us look, maybe we could find her body. No, her body be eaten by a raccoon or a wolf or some other bird. Maybe another hawk. That's the way it is. That's the way it is for wild animals, Tobias, not humans. Yeah, I know. That's how I know you're wrong, Rachel, at least partly. I am human, yeah, but also I'm a hawk. A predator kills for food. And I'm a human being who grieves over death. She looked terribly sad. She was very human, my friend Rachel. I went to the window. It was a beautiful day outside. The sun was bright. The cumulus clouds advertised the thermals that carried me effortlessly into the sky. I flew. I was Tobias, a boy, a hawk, some strange mix of the two. You know now why I can't tell you my last name or where I live, but someday you might look up at the sky and see the silhouette of a large bird of prey, some large bird with a rending beak and sharp tearing talons, some bird with vast swings that stretched to ride the thermals. Me happy for me, and for all who fly free.